What's going on, nation? I'm Scott from MusculoStrength.com, and today we're going to go over the three golden rules for the barbell back squat. And I also have a bonus rule at the end, so make sure you watch the entire video. Now, another important announcement, guys. The Cheat and Recover program is live, and it's on MusculoStrength.com. So if you haven't seen it yet, make sure you do. If you would like to make some serious gains and work with overloading fuse with high volume, this is the program for you. It's going to change your life. Also, the app is dropping relatively soon, and I've made a, a page where you guys can go and register. So as soon as the app comes out, I'll email a link to you, and you'll be able to download it right away. So without any further ado, let's get to those golden rules. Golden rule number one, guys, you must always go ass to grass on every single repetition. Now, we've all seen the quarter squats in the gym, and they look like this. Usually there's like seven plates on each side of the barbell and you got dudes doing this for their squats. This is doing nothing. And then for those of you who only go down halfway and come back up, believe it or not, you're actually placing more tension in your knees stopping and then having to get things going at halfway versus going all the way down. If you want to avoid acute or chronic pain in your knees, guys, you need to teach your body full range of motion. And full range of motion is going all the way down, keeping your chest up, ass the grass, and then coming all the way back up to the top like this on every single repetition. Now, if you're not able to go full range of motion yet, obviously you might have some flexibility issues. Um, I do have some articles on my website that can help you with that. I'll link to them down in the info section below. But I'll tell you what, guys, when I first started going true, you know, ass the grass squatting, all the way down, all the way up, I had to significantly lower my weight in order to be able to do that. And something that you guys can do right now to try to see what it feels like to go all the way down is put some weight on the bar. So 135, like 95 to 135 pounds, depending on how strong you are. And then what you're gonna have to do is go down to the bottom like this and then try to like move your feet around and see what feels the most comfortable to stay in this position because your form is going to change when you go ass to grass. And for me, I used to squat with my feet a little too close, and that was preventing me from going all the way down. So what I had to do was, was try different foot stances and go all the way down, and then when in the bottom position, kind of adjust my body and then get used to that to perform my reps. So golden rule number one, guys, ass to grass every time. Golden rule number two, guys, you cannot push through your toes when you squat. You need to push through your heels. Proper range of motion, once again, ass to grass, but as you come up, you push through the heels so your feet stay flat the entire time. What often happens when people squat, and it's usually due in the beginning to having tight ankles or poor ankle flexibility, is that as you come down, your heels start to come off the ground like this, and then you push through your toes to get back to the starting position. So if you have poor ankle flexibility, then you should probably address that before you start squatting heavy. Now, what can also happen is maybe your ankle flexibility is good now, but because you were squatting wrong for so long, pushing through your toes, you've developed a faulty recruitment pattern where basically your body is used to recruiting certain muscles more during a squat. So you should be recruiting a lot more glutes and hamstrings, but because you're pushing through your toes, you're recruiting a lot more quads, and that's pushing your knees in, causing valgus knee collapse, which can lead to a meniscus tear, tear in your knee and a lot of other injuries, so you definitely don't want that to happen, especially as you start squatting heavier and heavier weight. If anything, when you squat, you should be focusing on pushing your knees out and then keeping your knees pushed out as you perform the movement to avoid valgus knee collapse altogether. So how can you correct this issue if you're starting to do it? Well, the easiest way would be to get a pair of lifting shoes because those are going to elevate your heels a little bit off the ground. So the, the, pr the problem here is when you push through your toes, it's elevating your heel. So if you don't have lifting shoes, you can get a pair of five pound plates. Um, I wouldn't go to tens. I'd try to stick with like two and a half to fives. But you can put your heels on these, and what that's going to allow you to do is basically stay in that same movement pattern where if you were pushing through your toes, your heel would already be this high off the ground. But the difference is going to be is now that your heel is that high off the ground naturally from the start, you can focus a lot more on pushing through your heel 
because you're still in that, basically that same movement pattern. But now we've transitioned the movement from pushing through the toes to pushing through the heel. So rule number two, guys, do not push through those toes. And the third golden rule, guys, is knowing when to breathe. Now breathing, it might sound confusing to some of you because it can change per exercise, but the basis is always the same. If you guys are doing circuit style workouts that don't require heavy lifting, you can pretty much just breathe regularly throughout the whole workout. It doesn't matter what range of motion you're in or what part of the movement you're in, just, just breathe normal. But when it comes to lifting heavy weights, whether you're doing a heavy squat, a heavy deadlift, even if you're doing a heavy bicep curl, this is what you wanna keep in mind. You always wanna have a tight, strong core as you perform the movement. So if I was doing a squat, I would be at the top like this. I'd breathe in through my nose, and I want you guys to breathe in through your nose. And then as soon as I breathe in that air, I'm gonna keep my core nice and tight. I'm gonna flex everything, and I'm gonna go all the way down, all the way back to the top, and I'm not gonna reset my breath until I get back to the top of the movement. Now, you can hold your breath and do a few repetitions in a row, or you can do them one at a time. Everybody's different. However, the one thing you never want to do is breathe out at the bottom of the movement. Your core is the only thing that is keeping you upright. So if you take in that breath and you go all the way down to the bottom and you have like 300 pounds on your back and you breathe out, this happens. You go into spinal flexion and now you're shit out of luck. Unless you have some racks there to help you. <laughs> if you don't have them, you're going to have to drop the weight on the ground because in this position, you've lost all your core control and you've lost all that power that you need to get back to the top of the movement. Lucky for me, it's 135, so I can just get back to the top. So guys, breathing. Take in a breath to the top. All the way down. All the way up. Reset your breath and continue for reps. All right, guys, now it's time for that bonus tip. But before we get started... Be sure to smash that like button and let me know which exercise you want to see next down in that comment section below. And this tip, guys, is you have to always make sure you're warming up your shoulders before you start squatting. Granted, you should have your shoulders warmed up before you do any type of exercising, but especially when squatting. Now, you might say, Scott, I'm not working my shoulders when I squat, so why should I warm them up? Well, for me, I can only bring my hand back here naturally, okay? And this isn't proper position when squatting. When you squat, your hand has to go back another like four to five inches, maybe, maybe more like three to four inches, but regardless, it has to get pulled back really far in order to hold that barbell in place, which means there's a lot of tension on the shoulders, and if you have tight shoulders, it's gonna cause a lot of discomfort, especially as you start lifting heavier reps, heavier weight for reps, and what that means is that you're probably not gonna be able to do as many, because you're gonna wanna get rid of that bar as fast as possible. But we can solve all of that with a simple shoulder warm up, and as you guys know, this is my favorite, shoulder breakers. And all I do is go forward and back, 10 to 12 times, and then I rest, and then I do it again, and then I actually also will do my warm-ups in between my sets. A lot of us have this mentality that we do our warm-ups before we work out, and then we never warm up ever again. Believe it or not, you can actually increase your flexibility even more, especially if you have tight muscles, by doing war more warm-up reps or more warm-up sets in between all of your squats. So if you have tight shoulders, guys, do a quick warm-up before you get started, but don't be afraid to do one extra set in between all your squat sets as well. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out my Cheat and Recover program if you're looking for something new. It combines high volume with overloading, and it's going to give you a workout like you've never seen before, and you're going to love the gains. No gimmicks, guys. Just straight to the point training. And as always, more good stuff coming soon. See ya.